things in the classroom that I think maybe somebody is looking for a lost object or some kind of treasure, but they're in this room that has so many different decorations that they have to look underneath and over and behind it, and um, so that might provide an obstacle to somebody who's looking for something. So you can think about how even cool things, like the room being decorated really well, could be an obstacle to somebody in a store. So looking around, observing carefully can give you many ideas for an interesting story. Next inspiration, ask questions. So have you ever heard the saying, curiosity killed the cat? Raise your hand if you, are, if you have heard that saying. I see a lot of raised hands. Well, since we're not cats, I would say it's okay to ask questions. In fact, it's great because when you ask questions, you're learning new things and getting ideas. So some kinds of questions that you can ask to give yourself ideas are what if questions. So for instance, what if a giant evil tomato took over our town? Or what if um, our town got flooded? So you can think about maybe uh, questions with natural disasters. What would I do if there was a fire or a hurricane? Or maybe think of something kind of impossible like the evil giant tomato to give yourself ideas. And as I said, stories, they're your world. You can do whatever you want. So what are some questions that you might ask yourself to give yourself ideas for a story? What, sorry? What can like, the conflict be? What could the conflict be? Yes, very good. So you want to ask yourselves questions about the conflict. So for instance, um, you could come up with maybe an idea based on something you've observed, or you could ask yourself a what if question about something impossible to create a conflict. What are some other questions that could help us think of ideas for a story? Can What is your background? What is the background or what is the setting? Yes, so when you're starting out, when you're planning the story, you want to ask yourself about the conflict, about the characters, and about the setting. Now, when it comes to thinking of the setting and thinking of the characters and thinking of the conflict, what are some tools that we could use? Michael? Try it now. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, you want to go this one? I'm so sorry, Dora. They're not. Maybe this is because they kind of are not used to having this interaction. So I think they're got a little shy. This is not how they normally are. I don't oh. know why my students aren't really raising their hands today. Oh no, that's fine. Um, well, yeah, I, I understand because I have seen actually sometimes when I'm talking to teachers and college students, and I ask, "Oh, do you have any questions or anything that I've said?" and nobody raises their hand. And I don't know whether maybe maybe your arm is getting a little arthritic if you raise your hand a lot already, <laughs> and your bones start getting stuck. Yeah, that must be. They, they're they're already getting old and their arms are sticky. Yeah, so them. try to prevent that. Start exercising those arms. Um, so you know, maybe tonight, can I ask you, Dora, maybe just to kind of maybe break the ice, you know, with them a little bit because they're interested on how you became a published author so young. Like, what in, what are, you, you're talking about some ideas, how they can become story writers. What are, what are the things that made you um, kind of grow into like writing and, and want to become published? So maybe they kind of are, I know they've been asking me those questions and they probably want to ask you too. So I'll ask if you don't mind. Yes, I would be happy to. Yes, I, I actually should have said that at the beginning. Well, um, I published my first book when I was seven, and obviously I didn't just like wake up and say I'm going to publish a book. It was I had been writing for actually a long time since I was four years old. I had been writing, and uh, let me show you some of my early writing. Um, here we go. This is a big uh, folder of some of the stuff I wrote when I was I think from four to seven, maybe four to eight. It was a long, big. Um, big compilation here. So I had lots of these short stories and some of them were really short like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines. So that would be more like a short paragraph. And then from that I grew to writing longer stories and longer stories until I finally had several stories that I really liked and that I really wanted to publish. So that's how Flying Mirrors came about. But if you're wondering about how I actually came to wanting to write all this, which is 
heavy to lift up. Um, then I would say it started with my love of reading. So from three and a half I've been reading and I really, really love that because it allowed me to go out to this sort of new world because when you're reading then you, um, I guess you, you get a new, or you get to travel to new places beyond just earth. You're able to go to um, fantasy places and science fiction and, and other places around the world. And so reading is a really great way to learn more um, about these different places and about your imagination, I guess. It's a really great way to go on trips with your imagination. Um, so that's why I really love reading and writing. And writing because it allowed me to create those trips with your imagination. Um, so, hey. Oh, yes, thank you. So that is why I really love reading and writing, and I hope that you feel likewise. Um, so raise your hand if you like to read. I see a lot of raised hands. Great. I'm glad to see that. Um, because reading is really the first step when it comes to love and writing. Reading was my first big kind of springboard up there. Yes. Um, so now raise your hand if you enjoy writing. Great. So you guys probably already have experience with writing stories. So would anybody like to tell me about a story they've written? Michael Spellman, you want to share 